at this point in the film, Malcolm has come home from the premiere of his film in which he forgot to thank his girlfriend, five years, Marie. And we just found out that the movie he wrote also happens to be based on her. And essentially, during an argument that they have, she ultimately kind of disappears and he's searching, you know, through the house for her. Where the fuck you go? To pee. So where? Outside. Well, why didn't you just use the bathroom? Because I didn't grow up with a backyard and the novelty Jesus. hasn't worn off yet. This scene where he, he comes upon her in the kitchen yeah. here. You are the neediest man I've ever dated. I think this is probably take 27. Not not because of performance issues, but uh, but merely because of of the blocking of it. So this was something we, we all kind of worked together to figure out what seemed natural, what could create movement, how you two could kind of circle each other. I think that was a, a part of it was, you know, you see these this couple who, who loves each other very much, is having a very difficult evening, and we know a fight is coming, but we don't know who's gonna throw the first, the first blow. But whose arm are you hanging That's on? That's the thing, it doesn't really matter. Is this about tonight, Marie? Mm. Kind of. <laughs> I think uh, Marie uh, is aware that she's starting something here. You know, how do I get <laughs> into that with her not just being like attacking him, you know? But um, but he was like, well, it's genuinely inquisitive. Like she really is thinking like, you know, I walked around, I'm gone for like 30 seconds and you're yelling my name throughout the house, <laughs> trying to find me. Kind of. Mm. Mm. When we find Malcolm to open the scene, he's already triggered, you know, because of her past and her, what she's overcome, what he's been with her through. And so I, it's interesting, like, burying that. And that, uh, the more questions she's starting to pose, you see him motivated again. When he goes, he goes to get his drink. And uh, I think it's to really fuel up, you know, because something's a brewing, something's happening. We're not out of the woods. Malcolm, you can encourage me to have a life of my own, but that's just, that's bullshit. You don't actually want me to have a life that is separate from yours because you are too fucking needy. I thought we were done fighting. Don't be sensitive, this isn't a fight. Yeah, right. It's not, it's an observation. Oh, you don't want to go there. Why is that? Trust me, you don't. Why is that? Because even if you do, you're not thinking clearly. I think I'm thinking clearly. Trust me, you're not. Huh, well, I do have a slightly masochistic streak. But you're not dumb. Oh my God, thank you. Don't be a fucking brat. And don't fucking patronize me and tell me I gave up something when you know damn well your work is all that you have time for and all you fucking care about. Oh, so you gave up a fucking career in acting to be an emotional fucking support dog. Fuck I you, get Malcolm. My favorite uh, moment in this entire, like, fight sequence is when JD is following you around the bar back into the bedroom, uh, and I think you hit uh, Z, you hit Marcel's shoulder a little bit and the camera bumps and then JD comes too close to the camera as Marcel's trying to back up into the bedroom. And But as an actor, JD doesn't stop. He just keeps going. And the messiness of it is what gives it that life. It's what, it's what makes it feel honest and real. And by morning, you're drinking on Zanny's, trying to fucking cut your wrist with a pair of fucking nail scissors. Malcolm, I want you to leave this room. Oh, shut the fuck up, Marie. You know, I get it. I really do. You have pain and fucking disappointment and dreams like everybody else on planet Earth. You're mad that you didn't get the jobs you wish you got. You're embarrassed that you had to play skinny girl in Alley and concerned nurse number two. Well, guess what? None of us are proud of where we first start off. There's this similar sort of bearing the undercurrent, you know, posturing almost. Like there's something, like it gets, it gets blown out when he, when he, like even in this moment here, all the things that he says, but then he's trying to get it like back together or act like he has it together, like he's the mature one, you know, when in fact, maybe he's not. But you do have to work harder than 99% of people. You know what's bullshit? What's a fucking cop out, Marie? Is you acting like my work is so fucking suffocating that you can't even breathe, that you don't have any fucking space. I mean, look around. Look at this fucking house the production company put us up in. Pick a room. Get to fucking work and stop blaming me for your inability to get your shit together. There's, I've just noticed that he, he was like this, this facial thing he does. It, it's posturing. You know, he's faking it. You know, really, he's trying to suppress, but he's faking it. It looks like he's, he 
he's posing, you know, and uh, I think that was on, that seemed to be on purpose because she's starting to reveal some truths. His facial expressions, his mannerisms, all that kind of starts to change and come to surface. When you relapsed, I was there for you. When we lived on 38th Street and you went out to that meeting, right? You went to the meeting and you didn't come home because you were fucking somebody else, right? Guess who was there for you? This nigga right here. So, don't go there. Do not fucking go there because you are not gonna win this one, Marie. Trust me. I just want to point out that brilliant take that you had that all of us knew was going to be the one that I also recorded on my phone and we played every day on set because I mean the way he ended it and he pointed at her and you didn't come home because you were woo! and then he added his little thing at the end I said you better go ahead John David you better give us a performance Give me fuel to to try to beat beat you down in the next scene because well, I don't know. I wouldn't give you that much fuel because like you it really. Was an, it was an iconic moment for all of us on set. Yeah. I, I would say, and I think this is this is why just from a from a filmmaking perspective, I struggled with with how how to shoot and capture each scene because there was such a raw energy that was coming out between the two of you that any fixed ideas I had about how this would be shot. Oh, so this is, you know, let's just be, this should be a lock off, this should be Dolly, kind of all went out the window um, for every scene. And we just had to kind of adapt as a crew to what you two were bringing. And, and uh, honestly, the kind of the lightning in a bottle that was being captured between the two of you because it felt so real, so raw, um, and uh, we were just doing everything we could to not miss one one frame of this performance. It's crazy too how uh, Malcolm is lit in that moment when he's almost like like as he's digging in, like he's he's getting lower to dig, and like there's this like shadow of like anger that's following him that you can literally vision, like you can see through the angle of the camera, which was interesting. And I remember remember when he, we I, I go to the bar and. There was some stuff that was really happening that we didn't plan for. Now, just to your point, I, I remember you coming around the bin, like getting Marcel, like, go, 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 go. like, <laughs> like, but we were still going. We were still shooting. It was that was that was an interesting moment, though. That no, because really that that performance unlocked something within you that was just fascinating, and you walked out of the room. But I could hear, I could hear you. So I go running out, and I'm like trying to guide Marcel through the door frame and this thing, and I'm just going, get him, get him, you know? And then um, he's, because he's like, see, just, yeah, go back out, go right into it, you know. I remember us also trying to figure out how she was going to enter the scene because he had just given this beautiful dynamic performance, and she's sitting in the room and we were all just trying to figure out, well, how the hell is she gonna get back out, out there? All right, how about we cut the bullshit, Malcolm? So everybody's being fucking honest tonight. How about you be honest? Hmm? About the real reason you were there for me? For her, it was just to have that respect, to have that thank you, Marie, thank you for all that you do because I would not have been able to create this movie without you. And that's really, I think, at the base of it, all she wanted. That's, I think, how I relate to it and how it relates in the sense of this whole movie in a meta, on screen, off screen kind of way. And I've never been loved the way you love me or thought you loved me. I didn't realize what I was to you. A fucking movie a tragedy, one that you could continue watching for as long as you were there for me. And tonight, in that fucking audience, I watched the whole shit play out, so don't pretend like it was a selfless fucking act, Malcolm. It's literally the basis of your art, and it is the reason why all these people are calling you brilliant and brave and fearless. We did it a lot of different times in a lot of different ways. And it was one of those kind of like, creative battles of like, I wanted to do it really subdued. You wanted to do it like super, you know, up there. And then somehow we kind of found this beautiful thing in the middle. Hmm. Well, Jennifer, that's a good question. I guess you could say, I stole it. I ripped it off. Not a literal theft, a spiritual one. Maria's interesting. She clearly has a backstory. 
she's been through some shit, but she is now a brilliant actress. Very smart and capable and methodical, but also she's very emotional, but she's also very in control of her emotions. She can decide when she wants to cry and when she doesn't, when she wants to break and when she doesn't. She knows all of Malcolm's triggers, all the things that drive him crazy. And I think from the moment they step in to the home, I think she's in control of the whole night. You don't have the balls. You don't have the gravitas, the fucking introspection to look at yourself and your flaws and your shortcomings and the fact that you may not be the next Spike Lee or Barry Jenkins because those motherfuckers had something new to say, something true to themselves and their fucking experience. You say that the film is about shame and guilt, correct? Your words, not mine. All right, well, I have a question for you, Malcolm. Who's fucking shame? Who's guilt? What the fuck do you know about shame and guilt? You have two parents, no bad habits other than being a fucking prick and a college education. Your mother is a therapist. Your father is a professor. Your sister works for a think tank in DC. But out here, on these streets, these smiling fucking rich people, they think you know what it's like to scrap. Think you fucking lived it. Give me a break. You're more privileged than the white girl who worked for the LA Times who thinks she's doing a public service by lifting up your mediocre ass. Now you're being cruel. This almost, this event sequence, like this is an event in their lives and how you covered it sort of tells the backstory in a way. And it's just the perfect marriage of, of what you wrote and what Zendaya has given us. It just matches up so perfectly. I, I love that. It's embarrassing and it's cruel and it makes me regret sharing so much with you.